Well, former Minister Ramaklodi has uh, responded to what ESCOM and uh, Dr Ngubane have said, and he says that he stands by his claim. He says, however, he doesn't believe that the incident, uh, the alleged strong arming around the Optimum deal, got him fired. I spoke to him a short while ago at the Wits Business School, where he's attending an Oartambo uh, linked event tonight. Mr. Nguako Ramatlodi, our former mining minister, uh, here at the Witz School of Governance uh, on the Witz Business School campus, an event being held tonight uh, in conjunction with the Mail and Guardian. And he joins us now uh, after what has been a, a day of allegations and counter allegations. Uh, Mr. Ramatlodi, thank you very much. Uh, you, you made some claims uh, about uh, the ESCOM CEO and the chair, Ben Gobani. Uh, Mr. Ngobani Barney has since said they are preposterous. ESCOM has said, um, how can a chair and a CEO, a mere CEO, force you to do anything as a minister? What is your response to those claims? Well, um, the first thing is that the meeting happened in my office. So there's a record of the meeting. Um, it did not happen in the trees and, anywhere, and they came together to my office at the time to discuss the issues that have been public uh, in the public domain for the whole day. So, so you stand by what, what you're saying. Uh, ESCOM has raised something else which, which maybe is relevant. Why now? Why bring up these claims now when this happened two years ago? Now I was asked a question by your investigators the other day, the guys who work for Million Guardian, uh, which is two or so weeks ago that come to know about the meeting and apparently they are going to prepare an article for Mail and Guardian and uh, I was hoping to see it last Friday, it didn't come out. I wake up this morning to an avalanche of media queries. <laughs> yeah, that is it. A again, though, why, why wait? There have been claims from a former uh, finance deputy minister that he was bribed. This relates to the Guptas, to, to the state of capture. Why now and do you believe that the state is captured? No, this, the, the genesis of this particular issue had to do with the money that was claimed to be owned by Glencoe to, to, to uh, the power utility. Now, so we had to intervene in that context. Um, it had nothing to do with Gupta, it had to do with a broken relationship between um, Glencoe and um, Eskom. Since other events have unfolded, though, do you believe there is a link that, that the Guptas may have been behind this? Uh, my beliefs are immaterial on this subject. Thank you. Can I ask one more question, uh, and then I'd just like to ask you about this event. But uh, it was strange at the time. You uh, were credited with improving relations with mining bosses. They seemed to be a better relationship. Uh, you were then fired by President Jacob Zuma. Do you believe that was directly because you did not uh, give in to the pressure you claim you were under uh, regarding the optimum deal? No, the President thanked me for uh, steering the ship at uh, DMR and then pointed out to me that um, uh, they needed someone of my background to go to the DPSA because the former minister had demised. And I thanked him for that. Did, did you buy that? Of course, that's why I went to the DPSA. Right. Do you still buy it? Yes, I went to the DPSA. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, what are you doing here, sir, tonight? Well, we <clears throat> are learning lessons from uh, Oliver Tambo's life and uh, drawing from that experience, his character, what he did for the country, and what can we draw from his legacy and in building the new society.